in this video I'm going to share what I have learned in the way that Curator and Resilient Integration actually works. So we have an offense here, and uh, this is a phishing offense, and Curator has many rules that detects uh, something that smells like phishing. We have 59 events, no flows, and you know I can go in here and try to make sense out of all these, but uh, might not be a very productive action. Let's say I take this one and say, mail the, what, what's this email is all about? And we say that the subject is claim your economic impact payment, and that's the sender. That's the destination, the guy. Uh, so what do we do about it? Well, let's actually go into resilient before I actually even send the, the actual offense. And we see that the workflow basically starts by, you know, attaching an email sample. So we're saying, go ahead and extract from the, from the mail server the actual email, the email file. In the offense, you, you're not going to get, you don't even get the, the logs and flows. You get the big metadata of the offense that basically uh, says that uh, a phishing incident has been detected. And you get user IDs, a few things here and there, but you don't get the actual, even the logs and flows, much less the email, which is not even in the offense. So when that is actually retrieves uh, threat intelligence, you want to make sure that you go into all those IOCs and, make, and, and determine whether those are malicious or not. And then comes a manual step that somebody needs to check and execute on it because there are going to be some actions like removing emails from a mail server. I mean, if, if we detect that this particular sender is sending uh, a phishing email, you want to make sure that you delete every other possible email that come from that sender, right? Uh, so, and then notific notify everybody who was involved into this uh, about, uh, in order to be careful about getting any email from this server. So that's that's a that's a workflow. And you may say, well, this is a very high-level workflow, and it is, and it is done for a reason in resilient. I'm not specifying things like get the logs and flows from Curator uh, and how you're going to get the email. And all these actions are determined by rules and extra workflows in Resilient. I'm going to be showing you some of them. And, and the, the reason why this is kept high level is that should anything changes, because you, you, you use a different product, you do, use a different procedure, new version of this and that, then you change those low-level workflows, but the high-level ones remains the same. And you don't have to make such a complex, you know, fill of boxes type of workflow, because those things are automatically pulled from uh, others. So let's actually go ahead and send the offense to Resilient. in the template and selecting phishing and that's going to trigger that SOP phishing workflow that we just saw and as you see we are going into resilient and I'm in here and if I go to the task we see that some some things are beginning to be executed automatically we can see some of the artifacts as, as they are being actually gathered notice that that's one URL that's the malicious URL the fat wallet is the IP address that's the email sender the recipient the the subject, so, so, so some, some things are already happening uh, behind the scenes. And one other way of looking at this and how this is actually happening is by, if we go here and select from action workflow status, we see the things here from the actual button, right? Any time that an, that an offense is sent to resilient, resilient automatically goes and retrieves the events and flows from it. You don't have to tell it, and it already did that, those 59 events or so. Uh, were actually uh, part of the data for the analysis this is the kicking of the SOP uh, phishing. This is the one that retrieves that email file from the exchange server. So you, we see all these low level things being actually executed. Some of them are already completed. Other ones are running and other ones are uh, waiting as, as, uh, as that validation step uh, takes place. And notice something interesting. We never specify this action, search SIEM proxy logs for URL. But what this actually did, and it's triggered by some of the rules when we get anything that it has to do with phishing, go ahead and retrieve uh, uh, 
from the proxy locking Curera. This is this means go and ask Curera to perform an aerial search on your proxy. Let's say it's a blue code or whatever, and tell me who has gone to that fat wallet URL that we saw before uh, in the last, you know, maybe seven days or whatever, because we 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 want to make sure that we know if anyone else has received this email chances are that they that they may have and in fact if we go here on the suspicious email this thing is actually building the data as, as, as it gets all the artifacts this we saw before and notice that in here it detected four people John this is the one that that, that we saw on this C Al Puerto J Avedaño and S Revert whatever that is so all these people actually click into something that took them to go to this fastwallet.com thing <laughs> so and you see why that the, the workflow is going to execute on those things and again those things were done automatically now what we need to do is on this particular step we need to as I have shown in, in another shorter video of this we need to edit this and specify that this is a well, validate that this is actually a phishing email because some actions are going to be performed based on this and we will see those so I save that and I can even do complete and close here I actually prefer the well I can I can do it in here I can, you can do it on the outside but th this is a minor step I validated that this is actually uh, that's the case let's go to the task and now we see that the automation is going to continue this containment and remediation section we didn't have before begins to actually happen and notice that this is going back to the mail server and it's actually saying anything that has this subject and this sender tell me if there are additional emails in the air. after I get all that data remove those emails because they're bad. I already validated that those are those things are malicious. Notify the recipient about that, uh, that they've been part of a particular attack. Um, and this is an interesting step. This is blacklist malicious URL. Well, and this is uh, actually triggers this action, which we see that is pending. This thing is not moving, and that's what this thing is 93% completion because. Typically, this guy, the one that resolved the incident, doesn't manage the proxy logs. And, and what this thing is doing is telling service now, in this particular example, go ahead and open a ticket. So the fatwallet.com is going to be banned. I don't want anyone to go. And I want my proxy to block it right away so nobody else can actually uh, uh, compromise with it. And this. Uh, 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 the, notice that this this step is interesting. It says, well, from the people that I know that bef before here, they click on that fat wallet, I'm going to reset their password. I'm going to assume that they've been compromised because of the high level of security information that these people deal with. That's the policy on the company. Again, this is an example, but uh, uh, this action is, is, is going to be uh, taken automatically. So this is going into your identity management system. It says you have... Uh, uh, secret server, whatever it is that you have, and, and you're saying, boom, remove the, the credentials so they will have to reset their password. So, and remember that we went before and see from the proxy who actually clicked on that fat wallet thing. So we got four guys, right? And here we see removing matching emails from the mailbox. So, in other words, we went in there and found all the emails that actually need to be deleted. And in fact, if we go back now, as, as, as this thing builds more, and say, well, we have one. Notice that the number of recipients is actually five. There were four guys before that click on the fat mail. So this Jones, uh, this guy, uh, all these people actually went there, but Veronica did not. Nevertheless, the email is deleted, but in the actions of uh, removing the password, resetting the password, we are not going to reset Veronica's because she didn't click on the link. Maybe she was smart enough or maybe she wasn't there and she didn't, you know, uh, click on it.
but there's no need to reset their password. And that's the part of the intelligence that is built in, embedded into this, into all these tasks. That uh, when we go ahead and remove, uh, we delete the email, but we are going to be resetting only the accounts from the four guys and not Veronica's. In fact, I believe if I click in here, I just see, yep, and those are the four guys who actually click in it. Uh, Veronica is not there, so she's not going to have her password reset. That's good. Once the person responsible for managing the proxy includes the fatwallet.com address into the blocked uh, URLs, then from his end, he's going to click into service now and say, yep, I did it, bank. And then it will be equivalent. I'm going to do it manually here, but it will happen automatically uh, that this task will be completed and the incidents will be closed 100% with all the details, everything documented, um, and that's the way of uh, dealing with uh, uh, an example of phishing. But again, any incident that happens that Curator so well detects is up to Resilient to resolve it in the best uh, possible way.